Okay, just finished up getting my papers from that last segment painted, and I'm ready to start working with some more plastics to make some more paper and embellishments. So what you're going to need for this is you're going to still need your iron and your little ironing surface, a pair of scissors, a couple of pieces of parchment paper or um, like brown paper bag or the brown paper wrap, any, something that's going to protect your surface from sticking. You need that for protection for your surface. Um, I have here a um, couple of plastic, different plastics, and I'm missing a piece with the other. Here it is. Okay, I've got a graham cracker bag, a uh, package, a Ritz cracker package, and some cereal bags. And this is going to be my plastic that I'm going to be working with to, to do some more page and embellishments. I also have here a piece of my cereal box. I've got the offcuts of the two calendar pages that I used for um, the edges of my spine, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and use these instead of tearing more calendar pages. I'm gonna go ahead and try to use some of this stuff. Um, I have a little section of my tossed off book that we can use. Okay, little section of that, and I also have my magazine of choice. Okay. Oh, and I forgot to grab. Let me just grab one more thing. I need a little bit. There's a couple of little bits. I need a little bit. This is my brown paper wrapping. You do not have to use this, but I'm going to. Um, I think I'm going to use the brown paper wrapping and a glue stick. Let me grab a glue stick. I got paint drying everywhere here in my studio, so I'm having. Sorry, I have to fish the glue out. I meant to get that before I got started, and I forgot. And just a glue stick, okay? So, what we're gonna do on this is first let's prep our papers here. I'm gonna start with the cereal bags. Try to stick all this on my stool underneath the desk. My glue stick up here, maybe it won't roll away. And start with the cereal bags. Now, cereal bags are made of different weights of plastic. Some of these, like this one feels a little thinner, this one feels about medium, and this one feels heavy. So it's just kind of however you think you're going to be able to use it. Now, you can use the cereal bag if you like the seams and things in there. You can use these as is and slip things in here to seal them and use them for your pages if you like them as is. And let's do one like that first. You want to make sure your cereal bag's clean. That's been wiped out. Well, that one's even open at the bottom. I didn't realize that was open. Okay, well, that's fine. We'll do that. Let's take an image. I think I'll do one of the little um, offcuts of the dragonfly. I'll do a little... Maybe a, one of the little dragonflies here. But what I want to do is, I don't want this to be on the back of my um, page. That is why I said to have this scrap paper in your glue stick. I'm going to glue this to this paper because I would rather it just be brown on the other side, or you could maybe do, you know what, instead of using the brown paper, why don't I use a piece of the book and try to line him up where it's at least a dragonfly shape with some, um, let me cut him down a little bit, kind of, because I'm going to fussy cut him. Let me get him a little bit closer. There we go that a little bit closer to what I'm doing. That way, when I like that page right there, and like that little poem right there, I'll get this out of the book, and I'm going to kind of hold this up to my light so I can see what I'm doing, so I can see the wording on the other side, and see if I can't get my dragonfly placed somewhat 
think I'll place him this way where the more the wording is on his wings. See if I can get him placed somewhat where he's got some text on the back. You know, that's just all I'm trying to do is get, you know, to make it interesting on both sides since this is a see-through page, I want to have some interest on both sides. So now I can take him down and fussy cut him out very quickly. I may just kind of kiss cut him. I'm not really going to go all the way up to, you know, I'm going to leave a little edge along him, which will be okay. And you could ink that edge if you wanted to before you seal him in. I am not going to. I'm going to leave him. I'm just going to let him be flying around the page. I may ink the back one, you know, the back side. This side I'm not really worried about. I'll probably go back and go around his head a little bit more. Um... I wasn't going to do fussy cutting on here, but then I decided to go ahead and film this segment and I didn't have everything ready, so you might have to watch me do a few things that I would have prepped off camera. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm pretty happy with them just like that. Okay, and then he's got a little interest on the back. And I could just take my... You know what I'll do? Uh, another thing is, if you don't want to do anything on the back, you could paint your journaling square over this and it won't show. Why didn't I think of that before I cut him out? Well, I don't know. So, I'm going to place him inside my bag. My cereal bag. I think I'm going to figure out, I want this one to be about, I'm going to cut this about in half, I think and fold it in the middle. You can always straighten it up if you need to, but I think I'm going to leave him kind of flying off to the side over here. I'm going to put him in there like that, and he'll be the only thing on this page. I'm going to kind of pull that, use my finger and kind of straighten that out a little bit because it's got a little ripple in it where it was sealed. There, that flattens it out nicely. Okay, I'm going to leave him there because I can paint my journaling block behind him. Um, what do y'all still want to put in here? I could put a whole sheet of paper um, if I see a poem. Do I see a poem that's pretty? I could take this and cut it apart and do just a little quote down the page. I could take a piece of this, a piece of magazine. I'm going to see if I've got a piece of magazine. I think I'll put a magazine thing in there. This is just going to give me some color and texture. And I'm still going to have room to journal on this because I'm going to... Um, I know kind of which thing I was thinking of. This dragonfly, let me find it. It was a little floral piece. I like that, but that one's not the right color. This was more of a little... Um, So you could just fussy cut out the purple bucket of flowers on that one if you wanted to. hope I can find this quickly. I should have done this before I got on camera. My apologies. But this now you're getting the real deal of how, <laughs> how my creative process works. Sometimes not as well as it should. And I'm Oh, I like that rock. I'm totally not... I actually really like the rock. I think I'm going to use that. That wasn't what I had in mind. I always like to look and see what's on back. Look, I don't care if any of that's cut up. I like that. Let's use that. And I'm not worried about copyright on this because, ooh, and look. See, you could take your magazine and you could cut that into flowers and stuff. Ooh, be pretty. Or just, you know, well, we aren't two embellishment parts. Focus, focus, focus. Okay, I do like the gray and the gray, the bluish grays. I like how that um, kind of, you know, goes together. And this one I am going to cover with brown paper because I'm not going to use the paint on this side. And I'll, that way the brown, the brown paper that shows through this will be my journaling block on the back through the paper. So this one I probably will go ahead and glue to the little scrap paper I've got here. Um, now you could sew this before you put it in. 
you can stitch around things you can encase pretty much anything if you have some fibers or, or something you can encase those in there I'm going to put this on this brown paper and that way the brown paper I need to move this a little bit and use my table here and kind of burnish this down um, this brown paper will act as my journaling block now I can stamp or sew or stitch or anything I want to on this before I put it in there and I think I am going to add some stitching so I'm going to need to grab a little needle and thread if I want to do that Or I could do some stapling. See, now this will show through on the back, and this will be my journal block on the back. Let me make sure this is not too big for my fold. No, that's going to fit in there perfect. I think I'm going to put it in the middle, at the top, at the bottom. I think I'll put it close to the bottom on the side. And this one, I'll keep it up in the corner. And I don't think I will. I think I'll just leave everything as is. But you get the gist of you can stitch. Or I can stitch around the whole page if I want to. Okay. I can stitch around this after it's on here. So that I have a border around this photo and the, the thing. Or I can stitch it prior to that. So I'm going to leave this one kind of like this. And slip it in here. Make sure everything's where I want it. I've got that iron on warm. Get my little guy up here where I want him and cover it up. And I'm going to press with a warm, dry iron and press this bag back together. Okay. Now, when you're doing these, always let them cool under the, the protective sheets. If I lift this and the air gets to it immediately, it goes and it sucks up into just a mess of plastic. And you don't really want that. You want it to fuse. Now, see, I have fused this bag together into a piece of plastic paper. And I have my... Um, now, you'll notice that it doesn't stick on this paper or on my... Um, dragonfly because this is not plastic to plastic so if you have a little area right here make sure you seal these edges around these edges and I have one little area right here at the edge of that I'm just going to take the tip of my iron and go over it to make sure that my paper is sealed in there and that my outer edges are completely sealed and they are and it makes just a little pocket in there for your um, page now, see the back, I have a journal thing. When this is folded, let me fold it. I may have to cut that spine out a little bit. I don't know. I don't think I will, though. I'll probably take this to the sewing machine and stitch it. But I'm trying to do this in stages where I do everything kind of at one time. So now I've created myself a page. I have a page here that I can journal on this. Now, again, you're going to have to use permanent pen okay and you can put acrylic paint on here like I said I don't particularly I'm not particularly fond of this so I'm gonna grab my paint here and I'm gonna take and paint just a little um, maybe a little journaling block over that because I might want to I could paint a big block like this I could leave room for some stitching to the side you can kind of do whatever you want to. I'm going to put a petal of paint on there. And I'm going to take my paint and kind of just make myself a little journaling block. And for this one, I want to kind of go from down there to up here. And you can go over this as many times as you need to to make it um, as dark as you want it. You know, if you don't want it kind of opaque and um or wait a minute i'm getting those words mixed up again I, if you don't want this to be so see-through um you can 
kind of just do that. And I'll let this coat dry. And I'm probably going to want that thicker so that that um, thing doesn't... That is going to be my journaling spot right there. So I've got a journaling spot there. And I've left myself some area over here where I think I want to do a little stitching down there. I'm going to let this dry. And then I'll come back and paint over that again to get a better, a thicker coating. But look, it also shows through on the other side. So now my dragonfly is on a journaling block on the other side. And I can journal here and then my stitching will be here. So this is how you can make yourself some plastic pages. These are very durable. They're, you know, stitch, you know, acrylic to acrylic because it's plastic to plastic. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, don't dry this with a heat tool. <laughs> or a dryer, let it dry naturally. You can then stamp on this. If you're using permanent inks, you can rubber stamp on this and stuff, but use permanent ink. Don't use anything that's a, a water-based ink. Make sure it's something like stays on or some of the archival inks that are, that are better. But this is how you make your plastic pages. Another thing you can do with these bags is to make yourself a little, almost like a glassine bag. And I'm going to cut one of these in half where I've got like a little something similar to a bag. Okay. Maybe a little more accurate. And this is where your um, cereal box or a piece of paper. I prefer using a cardboard, but you don't have to. I like to use a piece of paper. I'm going to cut myself kind of a side's not as bent up as that side. I'm going to cut myself a little piece of cardboard that's about the size that I want this. Now you can be really super accurate here or you can do an eyeball. You need to cut it a little smaller than your plastic because you've got to have an overlap for that to seal. You know, something about like that. I just need a template of some sort. I'm going to stick that in there. Yeah, I've got it. I've got it. See how my, I've got more plastic than I have the thing. And if you want that, I'm going to do it over to the, to the back side. You can do it. I'll turn that plastic side down. You can do it where this is in the middle. If you want to use a, a piece of your, um, like this piece of bag here that doesn't have anything on it. If you want this seam in the back, just like this kind of bag, you can do it any way you want to. Okay? But I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to pull this in and fold it. Okay? Just kind of crease it down. And then I'm going to fold this one under. Now, let's see. How did I do this last time? Give me a second to do my thinking. Oh, I did it like that. <laughs> Cut off that excess a little bit. Couldn't think of what I was doing. I was like, oh, I confused myself there for a second. Cut off the excess. So I've got that folded over and I've got that on there. Okay. I'm going to take none of my plastic is touching except for those two pieces. I'm going to fold this over this and I'm going to seal the bag together right there. And you can put this seal wherever you want it. Just give it a quick seal. I'm going to let it cool until it feels cool to me and pull it off. And that is now sealed together, okay? Now I'm going to slide this up and I'm going to angle my ends a little bit. I'm not cutting, I'm leaving a little bit, you know, on that corner. I'm just angling a little bit. And I'm going to cut down where I have a little you know, a little thing like that, because this will seal all three of these together. You're going to fold and kind of crease, and fold and crease, and make sure your plastic, you get all that extra plastic out of there, make sure your plastic, I'm going to just put my, flat, put it between my plastics with that side up, and I'm going to give it a seal right there, and that's going to seal that little end, and I'm going to have Oops, I need it hotter. A little bit longer. A little more pressure. So I'm sure it's sealed. 
This plastic is thicker, so it can take a little more than the plastic bag scan. Make sure that's sealed. There we go. Now, that's sealed. And when this is cool, I'm not going to pull it off till it's cool. When this cools down, is it cool enough? Slip something in there. Just a little piece of paper in there to loosen it. I'm just slipping a piece of paper in there to loosen it a little bit. Kind of wants to stick to my cereal box thing. There we go. Now, get my bag out of there. Pull my bag out gently. And I now have a sealed bag that I can sew or put in. You know, you could, you know, cut the top of it. If you've got your little pinking shears, you could pink it or whatever. But I have a sealed bag that I can now put something, you know, a little ephemera or a little book or a little, you know, something inside. I'm just trying to find something colorful in here. I cut off the least colorful part um, that I can now, you know, slip something inside. How about we use the dark, which I know you know that because you just saw it in the thing. But now I have a vellum bag. You can also do the same thing and make yourself a vellum envelope. So let's do that one real quick. So we'll have some plastic, you know, see-through fun things that we can use in our journals. Okay, I want my cereal box again. And for an envelope, I'm going to cut, let's see, I'm just going to use the same piece of cereal box. I'm going to kind of cut it where it looks straight-ish to me, ish, a little bit straighter than that, maybe. Okay, that looks good. For an envelope, I'm going to want a whole back of a cereal bag without that. Um, seam in it, so I'm going to cut this apart and use this whole back. Now for an envelope, you're going to need, you know, a flap and, you know, your sides and stuff. So, fold it up I think I'll use this so it looks a little straighter. So, um, we don't need all this. I'm going to cut some of this away. Fold this up to about where you think you want your envelope to go. You know, um, I maybe want mine to go about that far. And I'm going to scoot it over because I don't need a lot of excess. And kind of cut it, you know, a little bit extra. So you've got your extra, but you're within your parameters here. So I'm going to fold it up about that far. And how far do I want my envelope flap to go down? To maybe about here. So I'm just overlapping everything. And you want to keep this part up here, all this up here, away from your heat. Okay? You're just going to iron this little section on both sides to seal that, and then we're going to cut it. Okay? So that's why it's good to use the parchment because you can, whoops, I moved my envelope because we're going to cut that off a little bit. And then you can stitch it or do whatever you want to. But see, I can see through here and I can see it's hard. Let me see if I can zoom in if you can tell. You can almost tell that this is lighter than this because there's my double layers. I'm going to take the point of my iron and go right there and aim at that plastic just right there and I'm butting my iron up against this cardboard so I'm not actually ironing on the cardboard I'm butting it up to it and let it cool it's still a little hot make sure that's sealed and it has so I'm going to go to the other side and do the same thing oops make sure I got it even because I moved my cardboard make sure I've got it even and everything's good like I want it and it's not because I made, like I said, I moved my cardboard. There we go. That's pretty even. It doesn't have to be perfect. Well, let's see. Now, see, that's going to bug me. <laughs> okay, got it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. That on there. And then again, here's my darker spot, and this is my lighter spot. So I know that I'm going to iron next to that lighter spot with the tip of my iron. 
And I want to seal that plastic really good there because that is going to seal my envelope up. Now, if I would have, if you want to make sure that's sealed, yeah, see it's sealed in. So now before I remove my plastic, I'm going to take, don't cut all the way up to it. You have to have a little bit of that edge there. So leave a little, maybe eighth inch or so of your edge and leave just, a, it's kind of almost like you're laminating, you know, and you have to leave that little edge. If you're using a laminator, if you cut it all the way up to your product, it opens back up and that's not what we want. We want a little edge there. And I did open mine up. I cut it too close. Okay. So what I'm going to do then, I'm just going to lay it on the cardboard where I can see it. I cut mine too close. See, that was good that that happened. Because if, if that happens, just repress it with the end of your iron right there and seal that back up. And then this is good to do um, like a little zigzag stitch on the edge. Ah, get that hotter. Just let that sit. Get it hot enough right there. There we go. Okay, now we're sealed. Let's do the other side. I guess you can do it this way too. It's just whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, whatever works. And I cut mine a little too close after I just told y'all don't cut yours too close. And what did I do? I cut mine too close. I get that edge, get that back down there. Make sure that's sealed. Okay, now, oh, I got other plastic in there too. Now, to reinforce this, what I would do is probably do a little either hand or zigzag stitching right here on these sides, but then you can fold this down and crease it wherever you want your crease to be for the top of your envelope um, and there you have your envelope you could probably if you wanted to to reinforce this edge you could probably go ahead and fold it too and i may do that on this outer edge i wasn't really worried about the inside edge but this outer one i think i will fold that down and iron that together and let that um, give it a little bit more stability right there. I'll just iron that just a little bit and seal that seam. And you could have done that on the inside too. Um, see how that gives it just a little bit more, you have to be careful because it does wrinkle it up a little bit, but uh, that gives it a little bit more. So now I've got a clear envelope that I can use. You could put a piece of your ephemera here and tuck this behind to hold it closed, but you can make yourselves little you know, simple envelopes and bags out of your cereal bags. So let your imagination go crazy on that. And this, I'm going to do the very same principle on the um, cracker bag. And I took the cracker bag apart because it wasn't, um, I'm just going to seal the side of this one. I took it apart because it was, you know, the bottom of it was pleated, so it folded around the bottom of the crackers, and it didn't set well um, with me how I wanted to do it. So with this one, I'm just going to iron the edges. I need to slip something in there, though, so it doesn't Let's slip this piece of cardboard in here. I don't want it to stick anywhere but on those edges. That's not long enough. This paint here, this one's long enough piece of paper, anything. Something longer so that I'm just sealing the edges. Okay, if I got that kind of somewhat straight. Okay. I'm going to seal my cracker bag the same way. I'm actually going to seal my cracker bag all the way around on both sides. I'm going to seal the other side too. Okay. Let it cool. Okay. Oh, cracker bag. I'm going to seal this little fold also. I'm turning it around where that's a straight edge. Um, just about a, I don't know, an eighth, a quarter, eighth, eighth of an inch or so. I'm going to seal that little cracker bag edge. Oh, I forgot to zoom back out. Y'all, I'm so sorry. 
Here I'm just fiddly diddling around. I'll have to check that. I might have to refilm or something. And then I'm not going to seal this one yet because I don't know if this is going to be a page or a pocket or what. But I do have both of the tops sealed. And this one I may put in the middle of the book like this. And I may leave this open for tucking things in. So right now I've just got these two long sides sealed on it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it for now. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. And I'm gonna repeat that same process on this one. This one's a really kind of I think I'll trim it down before I do it. And this one I'm just gonna make into a little bag. So I'll probably do the Folding the top down to give it a little bit more strength. I'll fold the top down. Put this here so that I don't get any any heat on anything I don't want it on. And iron that together. This one I'll do a seam in the back. Where's my little piece of cardboard? Right here. I've got that little edge ironed down. This one, I'll probably I need a bigger piece of cardboard. I'll probably do the same in the back like this. So I'm going to need a bigger protector piece. Or I could just do it a little at a time. I think that's what I'll do. I'll just move the cardboard. This is my top, so I sure for sure don't want that seam together. I'm going to do it. Just, I'll just move my cardboard down. So I want to make sure that that doesn't seam together, but I'm going to get this seam right here, and I'm only ironing on the plastic, I'm not ironing on any other part. Let it cool slightly, and bring it out, kind of get my plastic opened up up here, down here, where I can slide my cardboard down, and I'm not going to slide it all the way to the bottom because I want to seal that. I want to finish sealing this seam and this bottom piece. So I've got that in there, so the seam and the bottom piece. And you can turn this bottom piece up, I'm probably not, I'll probably just leave it. Um, pull it down. And so now I have a bag, you know, just your traditional bag with the seam in the back, that's how you can do that. And. I'm just going to trim this very slightly on the edge just to even it a little bit. I like it a little more even. And you could leave this bag in here if you don't want to look at that part. You know, if, if that bothers you, leave your um, piece of cardboard in there. And you could do the same thing. Angle the, you know, tip those corners off just a little bit. Fold it up crease it and then just steam it to the bag like that. Okay, I'll go ahead and do it since I'm showing you how to do it. I'll show you how to do it. And now all those seams are in the back. If you wanted to glue this on for a pocket or a bag or whatever. So now you've got that. I get my cardboard out. Make that a little bit tight. That's why you leave it a slightly uh, it's got a sharp corner there that's stuck in my bag. Well, wouldn't you know it? Or maybe, or maybe this is going to be a cardboard bag. <laughs> maybe I'll just stick something else in there with it since that's already in there. I'll just leave it for now. But those are some ways that you can use plastic in your journal to make some of your elements. So thank you for joining me.